Okay, so we have been talking about in chapter four moments, and what we're really getting towards is this concept that that you have rigid bodies, and I'll draw a simple uh, two-dimensional rigid body. Right, we'll just have a bar here, and that because forces are acting on this rigid body, let's apply a force F1 here. That force causes a moment to occur at different points on this body. So let's say here's position that we'll call point O, right? So this force creates a moment at O. So just by applying a force to a body, we're not only pushing on the body, we're causing the body to have a tendency to rotate, okay? What if we have several forces on the body? So maybe I have F1 there, I have F2 here, I have F3 here, uh, maybe I have F4 pushing here, right? There's lots of forces going on. Um, I could even have some bodies pushing, or some forces at cockamamie directions, even in this two-dimensional system. So I have all these forces acting on this body. And that gets kind of complicated to kind of write down what's going on. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to get rid of all of these forces and just replace it, right? So we'd like to replace it with a single force that has the same effect on the member. So let's, let's review. So each of these forces, F1, causes the member to try and move up or down, but also tries to rotate the member. F2 tries to make the member move, or the bo rigid body move. It also tries to rotate the rigid body. The same for F3, F4, and F5. So we have to account not only for the total force on this rigid body, the same way we did in Chapter 3, to account for the total force on a particle. We have to account for all of the moments that are being generated by all of these forces uh, when we replace all of these forces with a single force. So, we call FR the resultant force just the sum of all the forces, right? So in this case, that's F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 plus F5. And of course, I drew one of them in a strange direction, so we need to keep track that this is vector addition, even though in two dimensions it'll be really simple, right? Then we need to say, look, we also have a resultant moment. So we have a resultant moment. And that resultant moment is nothing more than the sum of the moments. So this is the resultant moment at O. It's the sum of all the moments at O. And if you think about it, there's a moment at O from F1. There's a moment at O from F2. There's a moment at O from F3. Moment at O from F4, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So here's our sum of moments. And so once we've done that, we can take the same member and say, I'm gonna redraw it. And I'm gonna redraw it without showing all of those forces. I'm just gonna show what the result of all of these forces is. Well, right here, I have a force. That is the resultant force. And I have a moment. And that moment is the resultant moment. So here's MR, here's FR. Of course, since this is 2D, right, coplanar system, then MR in this particular case, as I've drawn it, points out of the board. But it is a vector, right? So all simplification is, is an attempt to replace these, what can be quite complicated, and we'll get to some very complicated ones in a minute, uh, or actually in next week, uh, loads that are applied to rigid members with a single load and a resulting moment. All right, This is applicable to 2 and 3D systems. And in 3, 3D systems, this is, this is basically as far as we'll go. We'll just say, here's, here's the resultant force, and here's the moment. In 2D systems, we can actually go another step. Um, we can go another step in 3D systems, but it's a lot more complicated, so we really only do it in 2D systems. And that is to say, look, I don't even want to have to write the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this force, and I'm going to move it over 
right? It's the same force, it's the resultant force. It's just I'm going to move it over so that it actually creates the resultant moment. So here's my distance x, right? So in this very simple case where I took all of these forces, I rewrote it as a simple force here, here's the moment. All I have to do is make sure that this satisfies this equation, right? x times fr. So that's just the scalar, oops, f magnitude of fr, right? So this is in the y direction, this is in the x direction, so I'm just going to use scalar notation, right? I have the moment, I've got that from all of this stuff up here, all I, and I've got fr, I've got that from all this stuff up here, so all I have to do is calculate x. So I can replace all of these forces with a single force that does exactly the same thing to the rigid member. That's what simplification of a force and couple system is all, around, all about. Now, again, next week we'll look at more complicated systems. For those of you who are kind of yelling right now and say, well, Dr. Davis, you have this F5 force right here, so this force wouldn't necessarily be vertical. You're absolutely right. In reality, I'd have some component pointing this way, but I can decompose that into a component that points this way and this way, right? The component that points in this direction never did create a moment around this point. So it's just this component that I'm worried about. Um, or you could say that in this particular case that I've drawn, the magnitude of F5 is zero and we're dealing only with forces in the Y direction. Again, next week we're going to do something a little more complicated. The book um, and the sections that you need to read in the book are 4.7 and then 4.8. Okay? And primarily thinking about coplanar force systems. Okay? The book also continues in 4.8 to something called reduction to a wrench. And that's doing effectively this type of analysis going from this to this, but for 3D systems, um, and that's a lot more complicated. Conceptually, it's not that much harder, but uh, mathematically, it's a little more complicated. We're not going to worry about that in this class. So you don't really need to worry about actually being able to reduce something to a wrench. But uh, go ahead and read the section so at least you're familiar with the terminology. I'll see you in class.